Hello and welcome to Low Budget Gaming and welcome to again another slightly different video. So today I wanted to talk about some older games, some of my personal favorite games and well not all of them but some significant games and some of the reasons and some physical games that are still with me and have survived my nomadic lifestyle. So first up we have Anno 1602. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this uh, video about mostly PC games and PlayStation games, PlayStation 3, uh, and about the last two to two and a half decades, because I can go f uh, further back, a lot further back. I still have these. I don't know if they work, but yeah, I can go back to the late 80s. So I'll stick to the late 90s and onwards. So first up we have Anno 1602. Often people ask me what is my favorite game of all time and I think this would be it. There are many games, I have played a lot of games, Witcher 3 comes to mind, Assassin's Creed 2 was really amazing, uh, there's the Half-Life games, many many games. It's so difficult to pick one game. But I would say this would be probably my favorite came out in 1998 I believe I don't know if it says here uh, now back in the late 90s there used to be a computer magazine in India called chip and chip magazine used to include a CD with some demos some uh, uh, you know wallpapers screensavers even like Winamp skins things like that and there was a demo for this game and me and my sisters, we played the hell out of that demo. Completed it so many times over and over. Because in that game, once your civilization reached a certain point, uh, the game over, uh, the demo would stop. Now, back then, in the late 90s, the 2000s, I could not find this game anywhere in India. Like, it was impossible to get hold of this. Because of course back then, then there was barely an internet had just started. I remember the first time I used the internet. I didn't watch a porn, honestly. Because it was in a public cafe, I couldn't do it. Anyway, so it, that was I think 1999 when I first used the internet. It was like 60 rupees per hour. And yeah, so anyway, point is there was no torrents, there was no no way to download games directly. Websites were very basic. Took you like I don't know, several minutes just to load a few images on the website, etc. Like there was a joke once from IT Crowd. Uh, like they, they were talking about dial up internet, and the guy said, Remember dial up up all night, and you only see two women. So basically, that was how bad things were. So, anyway, so as you all know, I had moved to the UK in the early 2000s. 2002, uh, I moved to the UK. And after I got settled in and had a job and found a good place, bought a PC and stuff. In fact, before I bought a PC, I bought this. I made an account on eBay. This was literally the first thing I bought on eBay. I finally had it. And then I sent this back home to India to my siblings. And they played it here. And yeah, they kept it. And so when I returned, I found it. and I kept it with me again because I don't want to lose it. So again, uh, means a lot to me. And this game, amazing thing is, it's available on GOG. I bought the GOG version and then Ubisoft uh, gave away this game free as well, I think, end of 2019. And there's also a history edition now, which is like slight improvements, widescreen work support, things like that. So, again, I don't want to bring this thing up again, but recently people were unhappy, a lot of kids were unhappy when they saw Frostpunk. This is a city builder. And this is, again, the best game I've ever played. Alright, next up, we have the old, old dude. So, I had just bought a PC when I was in the UK. And I had remembered reading a review for this game in the Guardian newspaper. 
and they had given it like a 8 out of 10 or something, maybe more 8 and a half, 8.6 out of 10, whatever the scoring system was, but it was pretty high. And I had bought the PC and I was looking for some games. I remembered reading the review, like the review had come out a bit earlier, I bought the PC a little while later. There was a shop that used to sell new and old games. Uh, you know, in America you have GameStop, in the UK it's game, just game. And so I went there and I bought this for eleven pounds. I peeled off the stickers, you know. This was a used copy for eleven pounds. And again, great memories. This was the first game on my PC that I played. PC that I had bought with my own money. And initially it was so fun, like the three, four guys that lived uh, with me, we all sat around my PC and played, taking turns. You remember the second mission, the one where we had to uh, assassinate a Russian general. There were four generals and we had to pick the right one. We had a lot of fun doing that. And we even, even like uh, took turns, like one on the mouse and one on the keyboard. You know, you know all the usual stuff. Again, great memories for this game. And again, I still have it brought it with me. A year later, Hitman Contracts came out. Some of the best uh, trailers, I think, were made for this game. I bought this from a superstore in the UK called Asda, ASDA. And I just went in there, saw the game on the shelf, picked it up, paid full price, I think it was like 20 pounds. And, and yeah, bought it. And then when I put it on my PC, I realized I couldn't run it because this was too demanding. <laughs> Can you imagine? This was too demanding to run. I, I, I had just integrated graphics. I did not have a separate graphics card. So I bought a NVIDIA I think FX 520 or 5200, something like that it was called. It was one of the worst GPUs I had purchased. I think it scarred me from NVIDIA after that. But yeah, 80 pounds I spent for it. Game was 20, I spent 80 for the graphics card. I mean, I needed the graphics card anyway. So this so again big important series for me and yeah I, I, I wish I had still had the same love for Hitman but I haven't really gotten into the new ones but these ones were amazing all right what else do we have all right another game that was recently free on GOG 13 amazing game and whenever I see like an old classic game being free, especially free on uh, GOG, it really makes me happy because I don't have to worry about the CDs going bad and I have a DRM free version and yeah, awesome. Also notice the publisher, Ubisoft. They won't be able to make stuff like this now, not make stuff like this. There was a remake that came out uh, for this game towards the end of last year. Um, it was one of the worst uh, remakes at launch. I think it came out in November or something. And I literally refunded it. It's like one of two games I've refunded on Steam. Um, the other one was Division 1. I have over 600 games, I think. Just two games I've refunded. It was that bad. And I don't know what state it is in now. Hopefully they patch it, they fix it. It wasn't even just something buggy needed patches. It just needed to be made properly. It wasn't even ready. So yeah, hopefully it gets fixed. But this was free on GOG, I think not too long ago. So most of you should have it. And yeah, I'm just doing this to show you the appreciation for games and older games and what they mean to people like me. Because a lot of people, again, kids, they have grown up with like better graphics and GTA 5 and stuff and they don't realize the nostalgia and the personal memories people have for stuff, older stuff. I mean, these guys in 20, 30 years will have similar memories for GTA and stuff, but yeah, I'm old, I'm getting really old. Uh, another game I have, which actually I haven't played, but I bought it because of its uh, rarity, especially here in India. Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow. Now, the reason I got this was this was probably literally the only copy I saw on sale in India. And there are six Splinter Cell games. This is the only one. This is the second one, I think. Pretty sure it's the second one. This is the only one that is not available digitally. You can't buy it. You just go and have a look on you know, any of the Ubisoft places that sells these games. 
team and you know you play they don't have this on sale because there's some issues with the lighting or the engine or something and ubisoft didn't bother you know fixing that and selling the game so they don't even have the game on sale that but yeah, another great series that I would like to see revived. Although I, I'm not really confident of the current Ubisoft if they're even capable of doing that. I have done a full let's play for the first Splinter Cell game on the channel when I first started. All right, on to some uh, console games. So not too long ago, I would say 2015, I decided to buy PlayStation 3 because I had heard a lot about the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 generation and there was some games that I really wanted to play for a while but couldn't you know financial reasons and stuff and by the time the previous gen the Xbox one and the PlayStation 4 had come out there were obviously a lot of older consoles PS3 and Xbox 360 consoles on sale so you could pick it up quite cheaply and the games were also sold on eBay and I really wanted to play some games. First among these are of course the Uncharted series. So we have Drake's Fortune, Among Thieves, Drake's Deception. And I really enjoy these games, really really like them. And I may be in a minority but I think I like the first one the most. It feels like after being a PC gamer for a long time, going back to consoles uh, was a weird thing and the game did feel like a console type game because this is literally the first game I put in and started playing as soon as I got the PlayStation. And my brother also wanted to play these games so when I was coming back to India I brought these with me. And yeah I was pretty much robbed by the customs in India, I had to pay a lot of money to get these games released because this was not just three games I had like 50 games and the console itself and headsets and stuff and they really ripped me off I, I don't think I could have bought the whole thing again here mostly because some of them wouldn't be available but I, yeah I, you could say I nearly paid double for all of this so yeah again if you are somebody who's played the great games the uncharted games I mean which one is your favorite because a lot of people say second game is their favorite and it is a good game I like it but yeah for some reason I like the first one quite a lot really good games and also first three games the remastered versions were given away free last year from PlayStation so most of you should have it in case you buy a PlayStation anytime I think it should work on PS5 as well um, what else 4 I think Uncharted 4 might be coming to PC so we may be able to just play them when it comes out. Next up, we have the Ninja Gaiden Sigma series. Well, Ninja Gaiden series. We have Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Sigma 2, and Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge. I completed all these games, which is unusual for me because I'm not really a fan of stuff and this was before uh, it's a hard game I think the first one is pretty hard very difficult graphics obviously will feel outdated now but they're still pretty decent and the other reason I'm you know talking about these games is in a few days or I mean depending on when you're watching them, um, this should be on PC it's coming to Steam and I don't know how much it's going to cost they don't I see it but for all time's sake, I'll probably try to get these. I don't know if I would play them again, but yeah, I would like to try them again. And hopefully, they make more games in this because yeah, this was a fun series, a fun action stuff, old console, and the graphics were really good. For I think even the second one looked pretty good, and the third one, this third one came out in 2012, I think, looks very good for a PS3 game. And this one was pretty recent. This, this the first one does feel a little uh, dated. It's originally like a 2004 game, and then what the Sigma version came out in 07, I think. But yeah, it's still a good game. And okay, we got one more, which is a very popular game, mainstream cult 
as well like everybody likes it and yeah i would say i'm not much different it's the shadow of the causes and high coconut well, i'm counting both of them most people talk about shadow of the colossus but i actually prefer ico more i don't know why it just felt a nicer game shadow of the colossus is decent it's got uh, again everybody's heard of this i'm not going to go into too much detail we have to kill these giants across the map and first game ico is a little different this thing is a boy who's helping us so again different style of japanese games i haven't played too many japanese made games i probably have i mean depending on uh, if you count everything i mean sonic hedgehog is technically japanese so yeah again i like ico more than shadow of colossus but shadow of colossus is good so they remade shadow of colossus i hope they make a remake ico as well it would be nice anyway just felt like talking about old stuff and you know, reminiscing thank you for watching see you next time